McElroy here with a quick reminder that today we're offering another one of our exclusive AutoLine Premium shows, where you buy a ticket for 99 cents and you can see our behind the scenes taping of a show that will not be available for another six weeks on public television. Tune in at 2.15 this afternoon Eastern Time to see today's topic, which is all about should you buy or lease a car? See you then. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Borg Warner, feel good about driving. Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. And by Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. Hello and welcome to AutoLine Daily, where we keep you up to speed on what's happening in the wonderful world of cars and the people who make them. And speaking of people in the industry, it sure is good to be an automotive CEO, especially if you live in the United States or Europe. If you work in Japan, I'm sure the living's easy, but you sure don't make the same kind of money. Bloomberg did a compilation of the compensation of certain CEOs, and the numbers sure are interesting. Alan Mulally at Ford tops the list. He pulled in $21 million last year. Next comes Martin Vinterkorn, the CEO of the Volkswagen Group, at $19 million. Sergio Marchione came in at the same amount, though that's a figure from a year ago, and most of it comes from Fiat. Chrysler is only paying Sergio about $1.2 million a year. Then it drops down to Dan Ackerson at GM, who earned $11 million, just ahead of Dieter Zetsche at Daimler, who made 10.6, and Carlos Goen at Nissan made $10 million. Goen may be the highest paid executive in Japan. Akio Toyota, who has overseen an amazing turnaround at Toyota, only made $1.9 million, and Ito Takanobu at Honda only made $1.5 million. Industry analyst Marianne Keller says that, especially compared to Akio Toyota, the other CEOs are overpaid. But other compensation experts say Toyota's and Honda's CEOs are underpaid. So what do you think? What's the proper level of compensation for an automotive CEO? Okay, now let's get to some product news. Cadillac just announced the pricing for the 2014 XTS V Sport. It starts at just over $63,000, though that includes destination charges. The car is powered by an all-new twin-turbo 3.6-liter V6, which cranks out 410 horsepower and 369 pound-feet of torque. That's 105 pound-feet more torque than the XTS's standard V6. The XTS V Sport also features a unique grille and 20-inch wheels. And all this is going to put some street cred into Cadillac's biggest sedan. And in other GM news, the rumors in Detroit are that the company's head of sales in the U.S., Alan Beatty, is expected to be put in charge of Chevrolet's global operations sometime this week. Hey. Wait a minute, is this at all related to why Susan Doherty announced she's leaving the company? When we reported on BMW's third generation X5 about a month ago, we learned all about the new crossover, except the price. Until now, that is. The base price starts at just under $54,000 for the turbo inline six. The diesel starts at a bit over $57,000, and the top of the line V8 tips the scale at just over 69 grand. Of course, it does come with more standard equipment like stop start and navigation. Even so, that's about a $5,000 increase over the previous model. I guess BMW's got to make up for some of those lost profits in the European market. The gas powered version will hit the streets late this year, while the diesel will come out in early 2014. Honda just pulled back the wraps on a refreshed version of its Odyssey minivan. But you have to look real close to even notice it's a new model. New fog lamps and a tail light assembly is about all that we notice. But of course, that's not all that's new. It now features a standard six-speed automatic transmission, enhanced safety equipment, and revised instrumentation and electronic controls. The fuel economy gets bumped by one mile per gallon to 19 city and 28 highway. And the starting price is up by $150 to just under 29 grand. The 2014 Odyssey arrives in US dealerships next month. 
A couple of weeks ago, I got to visit Bosch's facilities in Boxburg, Germany, to look at some of the latest technology the giant supplier company is coming up with. Coming up next, we're going to show you how Bosch is jumping onto the bandwagon when it comes to autonomous cars. Dow Automotive Systems, driving solutions in automotive, commercial transportation, and aftermarket with innovative products like Betamate structural adhesives. Lighter, stronger, safer. DowBetamate.com. Every two years, the Robert Bosch Company opens up its doors to the media to come on in and look at all the technology that it's working on. Some of that technology is right around the corner, some of it is decades down the road, but here is one of those technologies. What we have in this car installed is a 360 degree sensor set which is taking a complete picture of what is happening around the vehicle and we're using as well a very precise information about uh, the road uh, situation, about the map where the vehicle will be moved. The vehicle sees all what is around, takes the decision how to move in this environment transfers this decision then to the brake, the steer and the powertrain and is so capable of driving all our handling cores on its own without any human intervention. The vehicle is using, in addition to its onboard sensors, a connectivity uh, device. So it is connected to a cloud, cloud server where it can draw information from such as how is the traffic situation? Is there something new and, and up-to-date information about the, the traffic in front of us? Is there any hazards which are to be uh, obeyed or to be seen on the road? So this vehicle is not only highly intelligent on its own, it is as well connected to a cloud server. This is something which we will see within this decade already. And the next step is the highly automated driving where the driver can dedicate his time to reading emails, uh, making any phone calls, seeing a video on the movie screen or something like that. So we will not be supervising the vehicle anymore. This is something we see at the beginning of next decade to go into the market. You know, judging by the way that car has turned out, looks to me like Bosch is in a catch-up mode when compared to where Google and the VW group are with their autonomous cars. Even so, Bosch sure is aggressive with its plans to be production ready at the end of the decade. And you can bet it is going to be a big player in this technology. Anyway, that wraps up today's show. Thanks for watching, and we hope to see you again tomorrow.